Peter, thanks for your time. Westpac's full year results are out today. It's a solid result. What do you see as the highlights? Well, good to be with you, Emma. So I, um, I'm pleased with this result. So we've made progress on each of our fixed, simplify and perform priorities. In terms of our financial performance, statutory profit was up 4%, cash earnings were down 1% and dividends per share over the year were up 6%. So we see that as a solid performance. Uh, we had particularly strong growth in the second half, which I'm pleased about, uh, with loan growth, uh, expanding margins and costs down. So that was good. Over the year, we had to accommodate a big increase in impairments. Um, because last year was a benefit, this year's a charge. The move's quite large, it's 925 million. But you put it all together, very happy with a solid result this year. Uh, and dividends for shareholders were up 6% uh, over the year. And Peter, mortgages, it's a big market for the bank and there's been quite a few strong dynamics happening there, competition and increasing interest rates. How's the bank's mortgage book gone? Yeah, when I look at credit quality at the macro level, we've actually seen stressed business, business exposures back to where they were pre-COVID. So that's, uh, that's uh, good from, from the bank's perspective. We've also seen mortgages, delinquencies fall again this half. So uh, at this point, there's no signs of higher interest rates impacting uh, delinquencies at, at this point. When we look at customer behaviour, 68% of customers are ahead on repayments. Uh, if we look at the number of customers where their LVR or loan to value ratio uh, calculated today is above 90%, it's, it's a small number. So we look at mortgages, uh, we look at um, the performance of the portfolio, it has grown uh, and we haven't seen uh, any increase in stress. Although I would say uh, with higher interest rates, things will get tougher as we go through the end of this year and into next year. And we're starting to think about that and prepare for that. If customers are needing help, we would encourage them to call us early, please. Uh, strongly encourage them to call us early. And there will be plenty of mortgage holders right across the country who will soon be coming off periods of fixed interest after locking them in in the low rate period during COVID. How's the bank positioned for that change? Yeah, well, when you know, fixed rates were a feature of last year, it got up to over 50% of loans written were fixed rates. And, and I think a lot of people were very smart by lowering their borrowing costs and taking advantage of historically uh, low interest rates. But when we assess loans, it's important that we, we assess people assuming they go back on to variable rates. So uh, we allowed in our assessment for, for some increases in interest rates. Um, uh, and so we think that the majority of people will be able to manage that step. Of course, not everyone will. And, and again, I would say uh, if customers need help, call us early in terms of the rollover. But from our perspective, uh, we're seeing people roll now. They're ro obviously rolling into high rates, uh, but at this point, uh, that's manageable. And Peter, the banks also return to growth in some other key markets, business lending in particular, and also the institutional bank has performed really well. What's been driving that growth and do you expect that momentum to carry on in the current year? Yeah, we saw in the business banks, so very happy with its performance. We saw growth for the second uh, half in a row. We had been contracting, so we've turned the momentum around and that was just good hard work, looking at process improvements, looking at how we can uh, assist customers quicker, uh, improving the delegation of authorities to bankers to make decisions. And so it's a lot of small things that have added up. Um, we've seen good growth in our business portfolio. In the institutional bank, we actually had strong growth. Uh, it was across a number of portfolios uh, in the institutional bank. And the feature was around 80% of growth was from existing customers and a lot were drawing down existing limits. So we did see uh, a lot of corporate customers uh, borrow from the bank rather than going to debt markets. Uh, and that was a benefit on the balance sheet because we saw more lending coming through the, the institutional bank portfolio. Um, we'll see how that plays as we, we go forward, but we're very happy with the year in the institutional bank and, and the growth that they've had in their lending portfolio. The net interest margin, Peter, was down over the full year, but there was an uptick in the second half. Is that a sign that the pressure is coming off? Yeah, you're right. So net interest margin, it was down over the year, really impacted by low interest rates. Uh, in particular, the returns in our deposit portfolios were impacted as, as rates hit record lows. Uh, we've still got competition in mortgages on the lending side as well. And then we flow through in, into the second half and we've seen that fast increase in interest rates in the economy. 
uh, and that's really fed into our margin where uh, the returns in deposit portfolios have increased. So um, we saw our uh, margin excluding treasury and markets at 180 uh, for the half. Uh, we exited at 185, so we were a little bit better in uh, our exit rate and that's good for, for next year, it gives us a bit of momentum. But the, the big driver was uh, higher interest rates and the fact that they're moving off uh, historical lows, as, as everyone knows. Um, you know, even at that level, um, the margin is not back to what we've seen in the last uh, few years. So we'll have to wait to see where interest rates top out in this in this cycle. But you know, margins have gone up and, and they've uh, got a good exit rate, as we call it, going into 2023. And it's been a little over two years since you set the strategic priorities for the company, uh, fix, simplify and perform. How do you rate the progress there? On fix, as I said before, we've made good progress on our customer outcomes and risk excellence program. So that's the program that is uplifting our risk management, and risk culture and dealing with a lot of the, the learnings out of the issues of the past. So that, that program's on track. We're really entering an important phase of embedding the change, which is changing how we run the business sustainably. Um, the project to um, improve our financial crime capability is also on track uh, and we've resolved a lot of issues, regulatory issues, class actions, uh, and we've also made progress in customer remediation. So we paid over half a billion dollars in remediation uh, this half. So big, a big year on fix uh, and well progressed. In Simplify, it's been a lot about simplifying our business portfolios. Uh, we're down to three offshore locations from eight a couple of years ago. Uh, we've sold uh, the majority of the business that we want to sell. We're now working on uh, BT Panorama and, and uh, that transaction. Uh, banking simplification is a big focus for us now and the rollout of the app in the Westpac brand, the digital mortgage, some of the uh, work we're doing in, in business lending uh, is really coming to the fore now. And then on Perform, yeah, we, have, um, we have seen large notable items in the last couple of years. Uh, we feel like we've seen the majority, you know, the big ones are behind us now, so we should have less uh, notable items going into uh, 2023. And then, as I said uh, in the answer to the previous question, loan growth has picked up for us. We've got expanding margins and we expect uh, costs to come down. So all in all, Coring's uh, a, a better result this year. So I, f I feel like the plan uh, is tracking to plan and, and we've made progress under each of the fix, simplify and perform priorities. And finally, Peter, on the economy, all indications are that we're facing into a bit of a challenging period ahead. How are you viewing the economic outlook and how do you feel the bank's position for that? Yeah, so if I start with the bank first, we've really built liquidity and capital buffers in the past and the credit portfolio in its macro sense is in very good shape. So we feel like the bank is in a, a solid position to go into a tougher environment uh, and we're ready you know, to manage through that and, and help customers that, that need to be helped. In terms of the macro environment, it will get tougher. Uh, interest rates are expected to go up further. We think, or I think, three and a half, um, four percent is the range we're talking about for the cash rates. So we've still got a little bit of upward movement in rates. That'll be hard for people. Uh, we'll probably see interest rates come down in 24 uh, after inflation has been tamed. Um, but rates to go up a little bit in, in the short term. And we also see unemployment increasing a little bit more. So back into the 4% range, which by historical averages is more normal range. The economy's a bit overheated at the moment in the, in the sense of unemployment's in the 3% range and uh, businesses' biggest uh, challenge is getting employees. So uh, we think it'll, it'll be tougher, um, but if it plays out with, uh, you know, higher interest rates, unemployment around 4.5%. Uh, there will be an impact for individuals, but it's more like what we've seen in the past. So, yeah, it, it, is, it is a tougher environment. But having said that, I would rather be in Australia than any other country. I think the fundamentals in this country are very good. Um, we're lucky geographically where we are. Uh, yes, we've got challenges, but I think we're just lucky to be in Australia.